Well, good morning. It's me, Kenny Polkar, your host of the party. And today is Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. And as you can see, it is another spectacular day here on Cape Cod. The sky is blue. The tide is on its way up. The sea is calm. And so let's see if that pretends what's going to happen in the market today. Because uh, as you know, CPI was due out today at 8.30 and it came out and it was better than expected. Meaning inflation is coming in even more than the expectation and futures are soaring. But what is it that we need to know to get ourselves ready? So it continues to be risk on, right? It's been risk on now for a couple of days. It feels like it's going to be risk on today as the Momo guys try to force the algos into a frenzy. CPI, I said, came out at 830, better than expected. We'll get to that in a moment. Traders calling the Fed's bluff as they are betting that there's only going to be one more rate hike, and that's going to happen at the end of July. And then we will go into pause mode, right? The dollar weakens, helping to send oil and gold even higher. And what are we having for dinner tonight? We're going to have the spaghetti al tono, and it makes perfect sense because we're here at the beach. Okay, so good morning, and yes, it was risk on again. Stocks continue to rally as investors go all in. The idea that the Fed is going to raise rates by 25 basis points later this month, taking interest rates to levels not seen since 2001, right? And that is not stopping investors, traders, or algos, algos as they go all in. And again, all of these investors and asset managers that went to cash in the late winter, early spring, now find themselves tripping over each other to get back in. And let me reemphasize, they are tripping over each other to get back in. All of the indexes rose again yesterday. The Dow gaining 317 points or 1%. The S&P up 30 points or 7 tenths. The NASDAQ gained 75 points or a half a percent. The Russell rose by 18 points or 1% one, uh, 1%, while the transfers were the day's winner rising 220 points or 1.4%. Now, just to remind you, the S&P is now up 16% year to date. The transports are up 19%. The NASDAQ is ahead by 32%. The Russell, which are the small and mid caps, is up by 8%, while the Dow Industrials are this year's laggards and potential diamonds in the rough are only up 3%. Everything yesterday across the broad S &P, 11 S&P sectors rose. Energy gaining the most, up 2.2%. Communications up 1.7%. Utilities up 1.25%, which is interesting. Uh, financials and industrials both up 1.2%. Real estate was up 1.1%. Basic materials gained 1%. Consumer discretionary up 8 tenths. Technology was near the bottom of the barrel, though, up only 2 tenths, while consumer staples, XLY, gained um, a tenth of a percent. And healthcare, bringing up the rear of the day, ended the day flat, which was a win for the, for the healthcare sector. Now, further down the food chain, we saw disruptive tech, Kathy, Ar uh, Kathy Woods' ARC fund up 3.7%, retail XRT up 2%, energy exploration and production, the XOP, a group that has gotten slammed this year, right? In March, it was down 16% on the year, has been quietly gaining ground over the past four months as investors look for opportunity. And yesterday's gains of 2.5% now leaves it flat on the year. So that means it's up 16% in the last four months, as many investors found value in that group. And speaking of value, the SPYV, which is the value trade, arose by 1.2%, leaving that group up 12% year to date. Aerospace and defense was up 1.2%. Metals and miners rose by 7 tenths, and the list goes on. I mean, everywhere you looked, you saw green. Unless, of course, you were playing it from the short side, where you would have lost money, right? The dog was down 8 tenths, the SH was down 6 tenths, and the PSQ, which gets you short, the NASDAQ was down a half a percent. It was all about and is about what today's inflation report will show. Expectations were for today's report to be better than anticipated, right? Um, and in fact, they were. The chatter suggesting that it's going to be the last uh, rate hike this year at the end of July. Markets are betting that rates are going to top out at five and a quarter, five and a half percent range. Recall that JJ and other Fed members have been preparing us for rates closer to six percent, which would mean additional rate hikes have to come into the fall, a camp that I am still in. Yet traders seem to be playing liar's poker as they challenge JJ and Loretta and Jimmy and Neely and Mary and Johnny and Mikey and Mishy and Lisa, Austin, Patty, Lori and Christopher, all the FOMC members. By now, you know, the report came out at 8.30 a.m. Uh, and while it was expected to show that core inflation remains at 5.5% year over year, it actually came in at 4.8% better than expected, but still two and three quarters percents above the target. 
Um, and so you can expect, and, and the month over month number and the year over year core numbers all came in better. So you can expect, <clears throat> there's gonna be lots of excitement about this today. Uh, prices for everyday items though are not declining. They're just increasing at a slower pace. Remember that. We're also gonna get average hourly earnings and average weekly earnings. And those actually came in a little bit higher than expected. And this data is gonna drive the action today as analysts try to handicap what tomorrow's PPI report will be. And all of this ahead is ahead of the official start of earnings season, which begins in earnest on Friday. Recall that I said yesterday that second quarter earnings are expected to decline by 7.2%, right? According to FactSet. But the recent investor action is telling us that investors don't believe that. Of the 18 S&P companies that have already reported, 14 of them have beaten on the bottom line and 12 of them have beaten on the, both the top and bottom lines. Tomorrow is gonna to bring us five more names that span the economy and will give us a taste of what's to come. Pepsi is a food and beverage company, right? PGR is an insurance company, Foot Locker a retailer, Delta Airlines is an airline and transportation company, and Facinel is an industrial construction supply company. And they're all due out tomorrow, mor uh, tomorrow morning before the bell. So we're gonna get a sense of what they say for those industries and for, those, and for those stocks. And if we see beats on both the top and bottom lines, that's gonna create lots of excitement. But more importantly is what they say about the next four to six months because the guidance is really what's important. And then on Friday and into next week, we're gonna get the banks and financial companies, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, State Street, and then the super regionals like US Bank, Key Corp, PNC, um, a Truist Financial and Bank in New York, and then the smaller regional banks. Remember the ones that could slam when uh, the SVB and, and, and First Republic banks got imploded. Remember that after all the big banks passed a stress test two weeks ago, investors have already taken the group up 5%, expecting to hear bigger buyback plans and bigger divvy increases, right? Uh, and so they've took it up a 5% on this buy the rumor response. So even a good report tomorrow could see the sell the news type of event. Amazon kicked off their Amazon Prime Day yesterday and that continues through today. Projections are as high as $12.9 billion in two days, which would be up 11% over last year's Prime Day. Much of that though is due to higher prices and not necessarily higher demand. So far, retail research is projecting top selling categories, including apparel, household essentials, and home goods. But we'll get all of that data tomorrow once they uh, finish with Amazon Prime Day. The dollar this morning is slipping, right? It's down 24 cents at 101.49 because trader types are calling the Fed's bluff. The July hike they think is gonna be the last one. And so they're selling the dollar, right? Because they would buy the dollar if they thought we were gonna get more rate hikes. And a weaker dollar is gonna help the commodity complex. You'll see that in a minute. The index is now below, the dollar index is now below all three trend lines, but appears to be holding, like I said yesterday, in that April, May uh, low of 101, leaving it now in the 101, 103 trading range. Oil, as you might expect, is up. Think the weaker dollar index for one and supply cuts. Yesterday, oil blasted up and through that intermediate term resistance at 73.60. And overnight, it traded as high as 75.25, up 2.2%, teasing the long-term uh, trend line resistance, uh, long-term resistance trend line at 75.50. And 75.50 is now a key and 73.60 is now support. A move up and through that level is gonna see oil test the April highs of 82.25 relatively quickly. And it's gonna send the Saudis laughing all the way to the bank. Gold, another commodity that's been under pressure as investors try to decipher the Fed's next move has now found stability in that 1900-1975 trading range. A further decline in the dollar will help gold uh, move higher. I, don't, I, I think though it is stuck in that range, at least for now. And U.S. Treasury yields remain elevated. The three and six month bills are yielding 5.45% and 5.5%, while the two years yielding 4.8% and the 10 year is now yielding 3.95%. And U.S. futures, they were up again. And then after the CPI report came out, they went up even further. Dow futures were uh, are now up m more than uh, 150. The S&Ps are up uh, 30. The Nasdaq's up 130. Uh, and the Russell is ahead by 12. The S&P ended the day yesterday at 44.39. It was up 30 points. Now it's about the momentum, right? As the Momo guys try to take out the April high of 44.88, hoping to send the algos into a frenzy. That's gonna cause them to initiate more buy orders, sending stocks even higher in what I think is a bit of a disconnect with reality, which is why I keep saying, have a plan and stick to it. Do not chase the names that are already stretched. 
put new money into those sectors that have underperformed and may be boring, but have strong fundamentals. Okay, so now what are we having for dinner? Well, here you can see I'm at the beach, right? It's a beautiful day out. Well, we'll go fishing, we'll catch some tuna, and we'll make spaghetti al tonno, which is spaghetti and tuna. So the recipe comes to us from the island of Sicily, right? Just off the tip of the boot. Look at the map and you'll see what I mean. Sicily's all about fishing and is responsible really for catching much of Italy's seafood, including most of its tuna. In this case, this recipe calls for to, you know, tuna that's in the can in olive oil. Now, for this, you need the tuna in olive oil, right? Not water. Then you need olive oil, salt and pepper, red pepper flakes, dried oregano, crushed tomatoes, capers, garlic, anchovies, white wine, and a pound of spaghetti and some freshly chopped parsley. You want to bring a pot of salted water to a rolling boil on the back burner so it's ready when you need it. Uh, in the meantime, in a large skillet that's going to be able to accommodate the, the spaghetti after you've cooked it, turn the heat to medium, add some of the olive oil, go around two or three times, add one or two of the anchovies, depending on your taste. But remember, anchovies melt. You don't even know they're there. And then you want to add the drained capers. Saute, the, saute all that until the anchovies melt. Now add in the garlic. You know, maybe three or four cloves, thin, uh, slicely, thinly sliced. Saute that for three or four minutes until the garlic takes on a nice toasty color. Now add in about three quarter cup of the dry white wine, Pinot Grigio Santa Margarita. Turn the heat up to medium high and bring it to a boil. Add the red pepper flakes and the dried oregano. Reduce it, uh, you know, let it boil until it reduces to about a third. Um, now add the crushed tomatoes. I use San Marzano. Uh, stir it to mix, season it with salt and pepper, and then turn the heat down to simmer and let it simmer for 10 minutes or so. Now add the, uh, the tuna and the oil. Break it up, right? Stir it in to mix it into the tomatoes and then add the chopped parsley. Now keep it covered, let it simmer uh, as uh, the pasta continues to cook. Now, You've already put the spaghetti in the boiling water. It's got to cook for eight minutes. You want it to be al dente. Uh, don't overcook it because you don't want it to be mushy. You want to strain it. You're always reserving a mug full or two of the pasta water. Remember that. Now add the pasta directly to the saute pan. Uh, add a splash of the pasta water. Stir it and mix it well. Cover it. Let it sit there for three minutes or so until it all absorbs, right? Open it up. Look at it. You might need a little bit of the pasta water to moisten up. Do that just a touch more. Don't make it wet, wet, right? When you serve this, serve it in a warm bowl, top it with a drizzle of very good olive oil and some more chopped parsley. And of course, you want to have the grated, the grated parmigiana cheese on the table for your guests to enjoy. This is a simple dish to make, and it's great in the summertime, especially in the late afternoon as the sun is setting and the breeze comes up and the ocean is high tide. You can hear it splashing against the wall and you can smell the salt air. It is perfect. In any event, it looks like it's going to be another exciting day. Stocks will move higher and you will make money. Until tomorrow, take good care.